So it didn't feel like I watched a whole lot this week, but I guess when I reflect on it, it's actually not too bad. I mean, okay, so I watched, um, there were, there were a couple of things in there that were non-anime, and I did spend time doing a lot of stuff other than watching anime, but, uh, you know, Simpsons movie and Safe House, that's not a lot, really. But for the anime I watched, let's see, I began with Breakblade, and overall I thought it was actually pretty good action, just kind of, well, it wasn't a bad story, it's just that it did not end in a good way, and I get the impression that's probably because it may have caught up to where the manga was, because I think the manga is still being released, etc., etc., and if that's really the case, then it, where it ended is actually pretty good after a fairly critical moment. The reason why, if it really is going to end where it is, is bad, the reason that would be bad is simply because um, otherwise it's a very forgetful story that introduces some really important plot ideas and concepts that in the end have no um, relevance in where it ended. But, you know, if it didn't actually end end so much as stopped, that's a completely different story. And, you know, overall, even though it was kind of, even though you could think of it as strange, the truth of the matter is the action in that one was actually, was pretty interesting, I thought. A very interesting magic design that's, that actually kind of felt more realistic, I guess. I'm not quite sure if the Mecha designs are necessarily realistic-ish, but it's it's kind of I don't know, just very very interesting idea. And let's see, I did lose time because I ended up rewatching the first three movies since um I started over to watch it with a friend, but whatever. Uh, let's see. After that. I guess I watched Star Driver Part 2, and it was pretty entertaining. I think I talked pretty positively about Star Driver when I w watched the first part, months ago, I guess. And I guess I was kind of afraid of starting it up in the off chance that I wouldn't feel like continuing for some reason, but fortunately, I resumed watching it, and it continued to be interesting and just hold my attention till the very end. I think uh, I still felt that feeling I described last time of somehow this feeling inspired by revolutionary girl Utena in some ways, while also being um, inspired by a new resurgence in mechas where heroes are allowed to pull um, solutions to the problem out of the air, essentially, as well as, um, you know, being kind of a mecha magical boy kind of setup. I don't know. All, all, all in all, I watched all of it and I, I was actually pretty pleased with how it went, how it unfolded, how everything went. Maybe not one of my favorites, but I'm, it's one of those series I wouldn't mind re-watching again. Let's see, I also watched the Tsubasa Chronicle OVAs. That was just yesterday, so that was a nice quick easy mm -hmm. thing to do on a Monday evening, knowing that I could leave room for what arrived today. But uh, those OVAs are Tokyo Revelations and Spring Thunder. And it's actually pretty unfortunate, because, you know, Tsubasa Chronicles, I, I, kind of, I kind of felt was um, a very enjoyable, pleasant series to watch with some interesting potential undertones. And Tokyo Revelations and Spring Thunder are pretty much it, uh, maybe an admittance that the series is not going to continue releasing because it pre pretty much jumps ahead to key parts of the story. One of them being probably the end of a to the Tokyo arc. Or maybe it's a just a part where they end up in a place called Tokyo, which had some revelations as to things important to the story. And then Spring Thunder seemed to take to, to jump ahead again and cover some important concepts, which. Um, was actually, it's pretty unfortunate because Spring Thunder doesn't, it kind of sets up for what felt like the final story arc, or the final part of the story, but didn't actually go that far. 
maybe to entice people to buy the manga or something like that. I don't know. I did know that they were both pretty entertaining to watch. Well, jumping in the middle of the adventures, you know, both of them were kind of jumping in their adventures. They weren't executed in a way like they're trying to throw a ton of information at you all at once. They're, they're still... Pay, it, the pacing, well, maybe just the... It's possible it was faster than the series by a bit. It wasn't so much faster that it felt like it couldn't have been the episodes taken out of the series. So they, they were very pleasant to watch without, you know, feeling like they're jamming stuff into you. And that's definitely huge marks towards them. Yeah, that, that's a good way to do it. Um... Thing about it, then let me see. I, there was a cameo in Tokyo Revelations that set off a huge nostalgia bomb that was actually very um, nice of that one, as well as being the interesting reveals about the journey. And in Spring Thunder, I think revealed more stuff, more changes, and the setup for the end. While also. I think both of those kind of made the Holic crossover with Subasa Chronicle far more relevant, and I haven't seen the second season of Holic because it hasn't come out on DVD. I'm hoping there's an additional work yet there, but... Um, makes me think it would have been really nice to have both those series and to see how all this stuff played out. But I guess only uh, people who read the mangas will get that privilege. Oh well, I can't do anything about that. Other than that, there was a lot of watching of One Piece, in particular because uh, I think I mentioned last time the story arc for season 3 was about to become interesting. No, I think I mentioned that online. So we got to the part where the th third season story arc, the Sky Island stuff, um, started getting particularly interesting and noteworthy. And we're not quite done with it yet, but we're pretty far into it feeling good. I think my friend did have a good point as to why um, the crocodile stuff was maybe more um, interesting, and a lot of that could be kind of interesting in the same ways that a lot of first episodes are interesting, sometimes even more so than the rest of the series could possibly be, by um having something important happen in the first episode. And in the case of One Piece, the second season was just overall a, a very important moment that kind of marks the true beginning of One Piece in a fashion. Where after that, I mean, the truth of the matter is since the Funimation release stopped at season three and I haven't seen the season four on yet, um, seasons two and three seem to have set a tone for what One Piece is going to be kind of like. Why it's relevant, rather. Even if it's kind of hard to place your finger exactly on what it is and where it's going to go and what it's going to do. You kind of feel that One Piece knows that it needs very important things to happen. And it's very interesting because it still seems to set up some very stereotypical shown in tropes, and then it tries to break them, you know, subvert the trope, and then at the same time maybe even subvert the subversion of the trope in a certain, in certain ways. Which is overall just quite, um, you know, quite fascinating. And I look forward to season four coming out, and also finishing um, what's available, you know, season three with my friend. Yeah, that's about it. That's all the anime I've watched this week. So I guess um, it's time to finish this recording and dive into the next set of releases. Or start watching from the next group of releases.